Welcome back, everybody, to Two Guys and a Stack of Comics. My name is Reed. Along with me is always as Mike. Mike, a day that has been awaited for a while, San Diego Comic-Con. The comic book announcements out of Comic-Con have not been the most successful. However, right. me and you have been massively concerned, as many people have, about the health of the comic book movie. And on the weekend where we get these two gentlemen right here with Deadpool and Wolverine seemingly reviving the box office for comic book movies so far, the MCU took center stage and unleashed some massive things that we wanted to talk about, kind of yeah. go through what our thoughts are and, and whether we think this could save the comic book movie or not. So, Mike, the major announcement that we got, this guy here, possibly the world's greatest comic book villain, Dr. Doom, created by one Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, will be played by possibly the greatest comic book actor of all time, Robert Downey Jr., returning to play oh my Dr. God. Doom. I guess, I guess starting the MCU and being the guy who got it along, he is the great choice to come in and try to save it in its hour of need, although in a very different role. Mike, yeah. just your initial thoughts on the idea of Downey Jr. playing you know, you Dr. Can, Doom. The clips I just watched uh, were amazing. The crowd just you know, fell over themselves. They went wild. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, for the guy that, you know, uh, helped or who was the major part of creating the modern comic book movie, which just, you know, ignited, you know, 15 plus years of comic book movies and box office blockbusters and billions of dollars made uh, coming back in. You know, if anybody could give a shot in the arm to the, uh, you know, rather, uh, you know, depleted comic book movie business, it's got to yeah. be Robert Downey Jr. And you just kind of wondered, you know, after Endgame and they killed him off and and you're like, you know, you know, I get it. He's too tired. He doesn't want to play Iron Man anymore, although he was so brilliant and perfect. Yeah. Uh, you know, to come on and, and play one of the most iconic villains of all time is just, it's really cool. It makes you buzz with excitement. And, um, you know, then you wonder, like, you know, when I was telling Misty about it, she, she was like, yeah, but, he, you know, he, he can't be anybody but Iron Man. So you got to wonder, like, you know, there is that little bit of it. Oh, but for still, sure. You know, what do you think? No, so I, I think the interesting thing is the instant buzz of it is absolutely exciting and a shot and what i will say whether it works or not um i don't blame marvel at all for doing this i think it's brilliant i think yeah. i think you can basically trace the correlation of the mcu's box office to when robert downey jr dies and it just <laughs> kind of kind of dipped and i think yeah if you're going to is i think the thing is Comic book movies are on the precipice of falling off, and largely they have been tilting to where it looks like it's over. You cannot play it safe. You got to play the hits, and you got to bring back the people that brought people in the first place. And so, case in point, this weekend, Wolverine yeah, no. Deadpool. I you want to see what brings excitement back to the theaters? You get these two guys here. The theaters are full again. And what's interesting is you look at the MCU, uh, the announcement with this is it's two Avengers films where he's going to play Doom. So it's Avengers, Doomsday, and then Secret Wars. You'd have to think Secret Wars, they're probably bringing Jackman and Reynolds in, and maybe they bring Tobey Maguire in. And so that's the thing is if, if they can get this, what's interesting is the MCU going into almost a year ago, I think when, when the Deadpool Wolverine movie was announced, prior to that announcement, you really looked at it and was like, man, Evans is gone. Downey is gone. We don't know if any of the Spider-Mans are coming back and that Tom Holland, every time he talks, kind of seems like maybe he doesn't want to do another one or doesn't want to do another one. It's been three years almost since Spider-Man came out. We've got no development on a Spider-Man 4. You know, tragically, Bozeman is gone, so T'Challa's out of the universe. Um, the, the Guardians of the Galaxy broke up. The actor playing Drax is gone. Zoe Saldana is gone as Gamora. It just seems like Marvel was getting all these pieces removed. And they, the crazy thing was... Blows. They were body yeah. blows. Every time you're like, you know, I think that probably was the plan is you kind of feel like T'Challa was supposed to be the new Iron Man. 
really like the MCU seemed like it was going to be Bozeman leading it. And you'll always wonder what that could have been had he not tragically passed away. But they right. just lost piece after piece after piece. And and they largely to their own, you know, they made their own mistakes in terms of instead of giving us movies with with Sam Wilson and Rhodey early on, they they sprung for the Eternals and the Marvels and made these movies that weren't based on comic books at all, weren't giving us the characters that we wanted. They tried too much to get into TV, and they largely left so many fans feeling disenfranchised. And you see the excitement that comes when you just give people what they want. People yeah. love Jackman. People love you know Downey Jr. They love Ryan Reynolds. You put those guys on screen, geez, fans show up. What what a what a mystery. <laughs> what that a is. concept. And you know the other great news with this because it's still kind of rolling. The Rousseaus. The guys who gave us the Winter oh. Soldier, Civil War, yeah. uh, Infinity yeah. War, and Endgame are back to direct. And so you see them kind of like doing, undoing their mistakes is what it seems, right? Because now you've got this great movie with Deadpool and Wolverine. You're bringing back the key elements. It's a risk for sure. But if you can get Robert, I don't care if Robert Downey Jr. said he wanted to play janitor number three in an MCU okay. movie. Right. <laughs> you, if he wants to be on screen in the MCU, you give him whatever the heck he wants. Because right. I think that's the crazy thing with comic book movies right now is they're in such a state that you needed something major that was going to make a seismic impact. And this seems like it will at least try to do that. Um, for for I mean, you, I guess we can kind of get the fan part out of it now and yeah. go more into the analytical side of thing. Um, how do you think Downey will actually do as Dr. Do so Because your wife, Misty, she brought up a great point in terms of there's going to be a ton of people where no, 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 that's Tony Stark. Yeah. And Victor Von Doom and Tony Stark are not the same character. At no, all. Not at all. So for you, how do you how do you think that's going to work? Do you think it will work outside of the oh. yes, it will get audiences back? Do you think story wise it has a chance? Well, acting wise, Downey uh, is going to do a great job. He can pull that off and and uh, and and be uh, outstanding. And I have no doubt. He's probably, you know, chomping it at the bit to get at it because Doom is such a great character, you know? Yeah. No, he, one of, if a, not the greatest comic book character villain, one of the greatest villains. He's a great, villains. rich character. And, uh, and Downey's probably just loving the heck out of the idea of playing a villain for once. Um, and so I think he's going to do a great job. Ultimately... I think there'll be a little bit, maybe a confusion for the tertiary, you know, MCU fan uh, movie watcher, but for by and large, you know, people just go to see, go to see a good movie and, uh, and Downey will deliver that, that they know that. And they're lucky to get him back again, you know, because, you know, he's one of the, you know, he's one of the founders of the MCU, you know, he played the original you know, uh, front piece for uh, what became the MCU. And he just did such a great job at it. It was kind of weird that they killed him off. I don't know the behind of the scenes stories, if he was just tired of playing it or wanted too much money or all those shenanigans. But um, to get him excited to play a character again, it, it is, uh, it's a total boon for the uh, flagging comic book movie industry. The first thing when I heard it came to my mind is I, I want to say it was what, five or six years ago. Brian Michael Bendis was writing Iron Man, and he included after the Secret Wars comic that Jonathan Hickman did, he had Victor Von Doom showing up in the Iron Man comics. And for a while, Tony Stark died, and Doctor Doom became the infamous Iron Man, and largely was trying to be a hero. And it's, it's just crazy how I, I was like, "That's insane that that happened," and and that Life reflected. I, 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 yeah, I don't know that Marvel time. had that planned. But it, yeah. it's one of the things about, man, that comic book I'm imagining now will become a little more popular in terms of, you know, Absolutely. literally Dr. Doom playing the Iron Man role. And you now have that kind go, of happening in this. Go um, hunt it down in your long boxes and get your eBay account <laughs> juiced up again. Because, man, that that run is probably going to be something. It, it's, it's really interesting. What I will say as a comic book fan, and you and I, you and I are interesting because, like, obviously we love Marvel. We're more DC guys. Uh, than Marvel, but we both love Marvel. I'm just really excited for this because it gives us something to be excited about. And honestly, you know, the MCU's fall and decline 
people can talk about all the reasons that it's happened and you get different reasons from different folks and, and everybody's got different positions. And I, I, I largely don't want to get too much into why it's gone there, but I think more than anything, what the MCU has been missing is what is the tangible thing to an audience member that makes them go, man, I've got to go see that movie. And this does this, right? I think if they had just rolled out another Avengers film uh, and, and used the current MCU characters, I don't think it would have done anything. When, when you look at the potential of what they've put on the board for themselves, you've brought back the directors who know how to make these crowd-pleasing films. You brought back Downey. I have to imagine with it being a Secret Wars adaptation, you could potentially see where you get Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, Doctor Strange, Chris Hemsworth as Thor, and Robert Downey Jr. back as Doctor Doom, directed by the Rousseaus. Man, if they do this correctly, you're. I think you could be right back to where you were with Endgame so, in terms of the fan engagement and interest. I don't know if they'll ever reach that level again, but you're right back on the board where you're making probably billion-dollar movies. So let, let me ask you this, because I guess, you know, I, I purposely kind of stay out of the, out of the loop. Mm-hmm. Did they have Avengers on the drawing board? So there was supposed to be two Avengers movies. Those have been announced for about a year. They were supposed to focus on Kang, the actor who played Kang. Oh, uh, he had some very public uh, charges. I think he had, I don't know if he got, I don't remember the exact legal things, but he got some legal trouble. Um, and so Kang is largely kind of and off they, the table. They had now. him on Disney, right? On the, yeah. They had, him on, they had him on Loki and he was an Ant-Man and that was supposed to be the big thing was the Kang yeah. dynasty and all that. Right. Uh, this, this does seem like a major pivot and to be honest, going from Kang, played by Jonathan Majors and all that was surrounding that, to now you have Dr. Doom with Robert Downey Jr. This is What is frustrating about this for me is, you know, I think this is Marvel finally waking up. And the problem, they never needed to, they went in these weird directions after Endgame with the, with the choices they made and so many characters and just throwing things against the wall. Um, it's, it's good to see them get it back on track. I think, and, and who yeah. knows? These could these could be awful. These could bomb. He could play Doctor Doom poorly. There's all that. I don't think so. I think Downey's I mean, a great actor. I really. I mean, when you watch so. Oppenheimer and stuff like that, where where he played, you know, a very very different role than Tony Stark in that. Oh. He's just a very talented actor with a huge. And that's the biggest thing that I think Marvel. If we look at why Marvel, the MCU worked and the DCEU didn't, the MCU when it was we're rolling along was so good at finding charismatic actors that the audience really loved. And DC just always struggled at that. But when you had, you know, Downey and Pratt and Evans and Hemsworth and Scarlett Johansson and all these Tom Holland and all that. And then DC, it was like, you've got, you know, Cavill was good and Gal Gadot was good, but Ben Affleck, while a good actor, just never really seemed to click as Batman. Ezra Miller as the Flash just never really worked. Right. Um, you know, Jason Momoa had a little juice as Aquaman, but like the Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, like DC just didn't seem to get actors people loved in those roles and marvel did and that's where i i this is absolutely a worthy risk for them could it blow up could he not do dr doom well sure but i doubt it no i think he'll do he'll do fine it, it, you know it, one of those things about downey wouldn't have taken it if he knew he couldn't slam it out of the park yeah it, and he probably you know read the the script ideas and probably knows the character and just was like yeah i want to play victor von doom man that'll yeah. be really that'll be really cool and no, so- and you want to talk about a guy who could secure up his legacy as the greatest comic book movie actor of all time probably uh-huh. is already in the running if not already right. but Absolutely. he may be the guy who created the mcu essentially with his performance as tony and then when they most need it he may be able to come back and and build it back up it'll be really interesting to see so let me ask you this um we were you know we knew those avenger movies were kind of put on the sideline the original to concept uh, conceptualize with movie. Kang, yeah, yeah, and so and then there was this buzz about Fantastic Four, you mm-hmm. know, uh, about six months ago. Like, okay, um, we're going to take it back in time. It's going to be in the '60s, and yep, 
Um, and so we were kind of thinking that was going to be the next one teed up. But do you think Avengers will come out before Fantastic Four? I think it's scheduled to come out after. So I think right now we've got the Captain America Brave New World, which is, you know, Sam Wilson, Captain America, and then I think Thunderbolts and then Fantastic Four. And then I believe these are the next uh, ones after that. Uh, so what are we these talking Avengers about? Films. You know, I think 2026, if I'm, I, I think 2026 is the Avengers. So 2025, uh, well, I mean, I can't believe we're so close to 2025 already. We're already through July. We're already in August. Uh, yeah. I know February is Captain America. I think May next year is uh, Thunderbolts. And I believe at the end of July is Fantastic Four. So we oh, get really? three next year. And then I believe, I, I want to say Avengers is next on the docket after that. So it, are... Here's what I'll say. That should be the way. I think the thing with Marvel is after this announcement, the only thing that could hurt this announcement is if you deliver a dud with Captain America, Brave New World, a dud with Thunderbolts, and a dud with Fantastic Four, that will really dampen the excitement. I think that's the only thing I'm worried about. Marvel has so many projects that I think are going to struggle and that they've got this stupid Agatha all along show coming up a spinoff of Agatha Harkness on WandaVision on and and they've got a lot of these things in the can for Disney plus if I was Marvel with this announcement man I would just be like can we just manage Captain America Brave New World and Thunderbolts and Fantastic Four just make sure none of those are an embarrassing failure and then put you know this one in theaters because Man, I'll say, as a comic book fan, if they can give me a movie that has Robert Downey Jr., Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds, and Tobey Maguire in it, you talk about making a film comic book fans go crazy of. Yeah. If, if they can give us that for Secret Wars, it'll be really interesting. And, and look, the, the interesting thing with this will be, um, you know, is Downey coming back? Is it a sign of desperation? Absolutely, for the MCU it is, but I do like that they're at least going like you, you know, know they man, had to step up the, to the table with some cash for bring back the Russos, bring back yeah. Downey, bring back what worked. But I would love to see. I would love to see it return to form and get these back in there. I think one of the interesting things that's happened the last couple of years is comic book movies and the comic book industry. I think have burnt fans out where there's been all these projects that we people have really not liked, who really seem to take directions where it's like we don't like comic book fans almost, has been kind of the almost sentiment from some of these companies. It's good to see that, that it might be coming back and that, you know, while I've not liked a lot of what the MCU's done, it's not because I haven't wanted to. Like, I've watched all of these movies hoping they would be good, hoping yeah. they would do well. So I, I'm I'm really hopeful, but but the coolest thing is it got me and you talking about comic book movies again. You and I really I have not talked much about comic book movies outside of this one coming out this year, and so th remember, this definitely builds excitement. Remember a few months ago when they re-released all the Spider Mans and the theaters yeah. were packed. I mean that was a really good. What do they call it when they they uh, they test the waters? I mean, if that didn't yeah. show you that there was still a passion out there for these movies, and then the Wolverine Deadpool came out, and that that movie's just gonna go bonkers. Yeah, yeah. that's the craziest thing is comic book movies. I don't think they died because people were tired of them. People were saying comic book movie fatigue. It wasn't comic book movie fatigue. It was bad movie fatigue. Yeah. The thing that the MCU did. It didn't lose people because all of a sudden we just stopped caring after Tony Stark snapped and died. It's because they got away from what was working. The formula. They, they tried to give us newer characters that we really never connected with. And that's, that's the craziest thing to me about the MCU is, you know, they they had a lot of characters left after Downey and Evans were gone. People like Doctor Strange, and that movie did well because it was Doctor Strange with Wanda in it. And granted, I didn't love the story in that movie. But it made almost a billion dollars because, geez, you gave us Doctor Strange and Wanda, two characters that we like, and it did well, right? Spider-Man, it did well because you gave us Spider-Man and you gave us Toby and you gave us Andrew Garfield. And that made almost $2 billion. The movie Guardians of the Galaxy did well. That made almost $900 million at the box office. The movies where they've done what Marvel is supposed to do has worked. And it was largely these movies with characters that, to be honest, have never worked in the comics 
all that well. And that you just tried to like, no, you're going to like this because we're the MCU. And it, it just is so weird to me that after Endgame, they're like, no, we're going to make the Eternals happen. It's like, no, <laughs> give us the Fantastic Four, man. Like, even if the Eternals had been a perfect movie, and I, I largely think it's an awful film, but even if the Eternals had been amazing, it was never going to be a huge property for Marvel. Yeah. It's not a property that people wanted to invest in. You needed to play the hits after you lost so much, and they didn't. And so I, I think it's great that they're recognized. I am certainly hoping that it can bounce back. And that I do think we've seen some comic book fans where it's kind of just this industry, like, let's just let it all burn. <laughs> like the, the Joker lighting the money on fire in the dark night. Yeah. And I guess Disney and Marvel have kind of had that attitude towards fans as well. It seems with some of the movies. I'm just glad that we're excited about comic book movies again. I think it would be really cool. Um, let us know what you guys think. Did you get a chance to see this announcement? What do you think about Downey coming back? The Rousseau is coming back. Do you think they could tie in Deadpool and Wolverine to this with Secret Wars? Certainly, what's really cool is, you know, from when Deadpool and Wolverine was coming out to now, it's been a very good 24 hours, I would say, for Marvel, where yeah. they're going to be back in the headlines with some excitement. And I got to say, even as a DC fan, it is good to see that and see some headlines that seem to be getting folks excited. Absolutely. Let us know what you guys think below. As always, thanks for watching, folks. God bless you. Thanks, everybody.